Hello, today uh, we will be starting a series of videos discussing core concepts in Buddhism. So trying to fill in some of the gaps that have been left by my other videos which have mostly been centered around uh, meditation and core concepts dealing with meditation. So we're going to back off a little bit and uh, deal with those concepts that uh, I may have taken for granted in other videos. And uh, some of the concepts, at least in the beginning, uh, may seem a little bit um, uh, peripheral to the main goal. We're going to start at uh, some very fundamental concepts that may not have much to do intrinsically with meditation, but kind of set the stage and um, are the, the way that the Buddha would set the stage himself to begin to discuss the practice of meditation. So before getting into deep concepts like the Four Noble Truths, which we will get into later on in the series, we're going to begin to discuss um, how one uh, who has n maybe no uh, knowledge of Buddhism or even no uh, prior uh, inclination towards the spiritual life might begin to cultivate spirituality and cultivate um, the, the path leading to enlightenment. So the first concept that we want to discuss today is called dana or giving in English. And it may seem a little bit, as I said, peripheral or even, even extraneous to Buddhism to have to practice charity or, or generosity. Um, but given that the, uh, the core, con the core um, goal of Buddhism is that of letting go and giving up, it, uh, it's actually used by the Buddha as an introduction or a, um, uh, an entry point by which to begin to cultivate this mind state of letting go that is the practice of giving. So for someone who is new to, to meditation practice, the practice of giving can be incredibly supportive to create the mind states or the inclination towards giving up. Uh, so giving in Buddhism in that sense is uh, as important as it may be is not designed with the recipient in mind or for the benefit of the recipient. The idea is to benefit the giver, benefit the donor and therefore it's something to be done as a matter of course rather than something that one goes out of one's way to practice uh, intentionally. But the point being that a person who is giving, a person who is inclined to give, is more likely to give up. And a person who is looking to give up will, by nature, um, be generous and giving. And so we're, we're trying to cultivate this quality of mind, which is a giving, a, a generous uh, state of mind, which is in very much uh, a, a beginning of giving up. Um, and uh, th this is actually something that uh, we, we find a lack of in, in, uh, in places where Buddhism has, has come for the first time and people have begun to examine the text because often they will jump right into the core concepts like practice of insight meditation or the deep philosophical teachings like the Four Noble Truths or Dependent Origination. Uh, the Eightfold Noble Path without uh, stepping back and, and, and actually understanding the, the qualities of mind and the virtues that we're trying to cultivate and without Im imbibing these or internalizing these qualities. So the first one here is generosity. Um, this is what, what we're focusing on. Now, the means of practicing uh, generosity, uh, we have to take into account three factors. The first factor is the intention of the giver. The second factor is the object being given. And the third factor is the, uh, ben the recipient of the gift. And all three of these play an important role in determining what we mean by giving in Buddhism. So we understand that giving is important, it's, it's a beginning to giving up. How are we going to practice it? Well, first we have to focus very much on our intentions for giving. We can't give out of fear or out of spite or, or out of uh, a, a desire to get something back from the, the, re the recipient. We have to give if we want it to benefit us and to be a, a support for our spiritual practice. We have to give out of an intention to better ourselves, to become better people. We have to want to bring happiness to ourselves and we want to create harmony between ourselves and other people. We want to cultivate this, um, this wholesome state of mind. 
And so the intentions in giving are very important. At the moment of giving, before you're giving, when you're, when you're thinking, even thinking about giving, and even after you've given, not to feel um, regret, remorse at having, having lost something, for example, having had to renounce something. So we have to cultivate these states and, and, and get into the habit of it. So generosity is something that is actually going to be important throughout our, our Buddhist uh, practice. The second aspect is the, the aspect of the, the object itself. And this can be broken up into two, two types. There's the uh, amisadana, which is a physical or a material object, material gift. And the other one is a spiritual gift, dhammadana, or, or some kind of spiritual or, or um, immaterial mental support. So this could be uh, providing uh, giving your time to someone, or your, your, your energy, or your effort, or, or, uh, or your knowledge, and most importantly, of course, your wisdom. So this would be teaching the, the, the Dhamma, or the, the meditation practice, to others. And um, as I said, we often see that um, the, a lack of this in, uh, in Buddhist practitioners, even those who are dedicated very much to the meditation practice, they can often become quite selfish in terms of uh, trying to support their own practice and better their own practice and shunning the idea of, of sharing the meditation practice with others um, or, or, or even shunning the idea of, of being generous or supporting others or, or, or working to, to help others even in a material form. Um, and so again, we, we, have to, we have to understand that this is a, a, an important aspect of our practice, the willingness to give to others. It's something that we should do as a matter of course. When people ask for our help, when people want our support, they say, hey, you've, you've, I heard you're practicing meditation, could you show it to me? When we say no, when we say, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm not a teacher, and we try to brush them off, or we try to run away from these sorts of responsibilities, this is a sort of clinging. It's something that is not going to support our practice, so it will in inhibit our practice, because it's, it's stopping us from letting go. So giving is, is important on both sides, on the material, in terms of the object on the material side, we have to be willing to give materials, share the things that we have, and on the spiritual side, to share the knowledge and wisdom that we have. Now the recipient, the third aspect, is um, important insofar as first their need, so if it's someone who is in need of your help, and their, their worthiness, if it's someone who is worthy of your help. So, for need, we're talking about people who are maybe hungry, giving them food, or people who are in need of shelter, giving them shelter, people who need your help. Um, and it's not so much them asking you for help, but it's actually their need. If you, and this takes wisdom, this takes discrimination. You have to be clear whether they need it. Why is this important? Because it's important to create this um, positive state of mind uh, in your own mind. If you give something to someone thinking they didn't really need it, but uh, just because they were bugging you, then it doesn't really help your state of mind except to get rid of the, the annoying person or so on. It doesn't help you to let go so much. Um, we give to those recipients who are in need, it makes us feel confident, it makes us feel good about ourselves. These are the kinds of things that support our practice. It's like putting oil in your, your uh, changing the oil in your engine, it, it makes everything run smoother, or filling up your gas tank. All of these uh, deep concepts, um, like uh, the Four Noble Truths or something, it's like this great sports car. And uh, the ideas of giving, uh, things like giving and morality, which we'll talk about next, are uh, sort of like filling up your gas tank, because they give you the power to take the car, to take the vehicle, or to follow the path. And so in order to get that, we have to be give to those who are going to inspire us. We feel happy having given to them. We won't feel... Uh, skeptical as to whether they're going to use it for bad purposes, like giving money to a drug addict or so on. And uh, as far as so that is as far as need and as far as worth, uh, a person who is is immoral, um, the, the the benefit of giving to them, of course, is is far lower because you're never going to gi give rise to the states of of confidence and the states of of joy and happiness and and. Um, peace of mind that comes from giving to spiritual people, from giving, from supporting causes that are of benefit to the world and so on. So this is uh, just, just a brief overview. We could talk a lot more about uh, giving, but, but basically what I want to impress is the importance and the connection in Buddhism. This, this is the first thing that the Buddha would talk about when he gave 
um, a sequence of teachings. It's called the Anupubhikata. The first thing he would talk about in order, the first thing he would talk about is um, the practice of giving. So it's an important first step, and it's something to keep in mind throughout our practice, that if we're not a giving, a charitable, um, uh, if we're not a, a, able to sacrifice our own well-being, our own desires and wants, then um, very difficult for us to come to let go. It's part and parcel with the ability to you know, free ourselves from clinging and, and therefore suffering. So thank you for tuning in. This is the first in our video series called Buddhism 101.